I'm joined today by River North Chief Investment Officer Patrick Galley to talk about the River North Opportunities Fund. So Patrick, first of all, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, uh, secondly, uh, our viewers know us well for the mutual funds uh, that we are an advisor, River North's an advisor to, and the uh, partnerships where River North is the general partner. But now we have a closed-in fund where River North is the sub-advisor. So could you tell us a little bit about the River North Opportunities Fund and kind of how it came to be? Sure. The River North Opportunities Fund was launched in December 2015. Uh, like you said it is a closed then fund so it's river north's first closed then fund and we are the sub-advisor elps is technically the sub uh, the advisor of the fund uh, but we're managing the portfolio just like we are the open end funds uh, it's a little different strategy than the open end funds obviously we don't have to contend with inflows and outflows so that's a big positive it's a captive pool of assets so we're able to manage the strategy uh, without worrying about outflows at any given day uh, it's similar to our open end fund the river north core opportunity fund in that it opportunistically invests Invest in closed-end funds. Uh, it'll also implement uh, and utilize ETFs in its portfolio construction as well. Patrick, uh, I believe there's some special features to the fund. Can you walk us through uh, some of the features that people may not be familiar with? Probably the one biggest feature is that we can utilize leverage opportunistically, given that it's a closed-end fund. So unlike open-end funds, we don't utilize any leverage. Uh, but as we know, closed-end funds also implement leverage um, that we're investing in. So there is a portfolio restriction, first of all, that we can't implement leverage over 15% at the fund level. Uh, but then there's another further uh, restriction that we can't have leverage aggregating to 33% or above. And that includes our fund leverage plus the underlying fund leverage that we're investing in. So total leverage can exceed 33%. And 15 of that is the max for River North leverage uh, at the fund level. Correct. Okay. Uh, other features? Uh, another feature is that we have the ability to short. Uh, so in addition to going long in the portfolio, we can implement shorts to hedge out some of the beta. I think well, that's one of the attractive things that we find in closed end funds that you know our definition of alpha is purely discounts narrowing. So if we're able to isolate the, the beta and hedge out some of that beta in the portfolio and the discounts narrow, that's pure alpha. So uh, we can also implement uh, shorting at the fund level as well. Uh, that said, uh, sh should caveat that these are both opportunistic. So to date, given that we're in March 2016, to date we haven't implemented leverage nor shorting in the portfolio. Patrick, any other special features to the fund? Yeah, one other special feature that we have that I think unusual and, and uh, actually uh, setting hopefully a precedent for future closed-end funds is a special distribution. So within the first year, uh, if there's any unrealized gains in the portfolio every quarter, we're going to be doing a special distribution at the tune of 50% of that uh, unrealized gain. So what that means is that uh, from in any given quarter, let's just say the, the net asset value increases by a dollar, we're going to pay out a special distribution of 50 cents. Uh, in the first quarter of 2016, we did have a, uh, a slight uh, increase in the net asset value, uh, despite the market volatility that we all witnessed. Um, so we had appreciation. We we're going to be doing just over a about a three and a half cent distribution in April 2016. Patrick, if I'm hearing you correctly, most closed-in funds, an investor is beholden to just price up or price down. Uh, here, though, uh, owners of River North Opportunities Fund possibly get participation in the NAV uh, increase of the portfolio, which is unusual, correct? That's correct, yeah. So if the fund is trading at any type of discount, then you're obviously getting that money back through those special distributions at net asset value. So you don't have to worry about the uh, fund trading at any di type of discount. Currently, the discount on the closed end fund, our River North Opportunities Fund, that is, is approximately 6.5%. So not that wide of a discount relative to the rest of the space, but those special distributions, again, get distributed back at net asset value, so there's even accretion there. Can you talk a little bit about the open ending provision? Sure. In, in year five, uh, we have a vote, and this is an automatic vote that shareholders will vote on whether they would like the fund to convert to an open end fund or leave it as a closed end fund. So this is automatic. Uh, it's not a board uh, vote at all. It, it, this will be automatically going to shareholders in year five. And so if it's trading at a deep discount, uh, one would think that shareholders want to vote to convert it to an open end fund and thereby uh, eliminating the discount by converting 
conversion to the open-end fund. Uh, and it sounds like that's an important feature. So as opposed to needing an activist or someone externally coming in to uh, try to force the board to narrow the discount, uh, you're sort of building in uh, some automatic activism in year five. Is that a way to look at it? Uh, I wouldn't call it necessarily activism in year five, but it gives the shareholders the right to vote on, on if they would rather have this as an open-end fund. Uh, we also think, you know, over that five years leading up to year five, uh, the fund will trade better in the secondary market naturally if there's a, an open-ending provision and it's trading at a deep discount. I think, you know, it'll it'll attract certain value investors to uh, want to potentially convert that fund into an open-end fund. Patrick, for those that know the core opportunity fund uh, on the open-end side, which you mentioned, can you talk a little bit about the similarities and the differences between something like core opportunity and River North uh, Opportunities Fund? Yeah, obviously the open-end fund is uh, just that. It's an open-end fund, so it has to contend with daily inflows and outflows, um, which we obviously, as a closed-end fund, the River North Opportunities Fund doesn't have to contend with daily inflows and outflows. So uh, that's the number one biggest advantage from, us, from our standpoint as a portfolio management perspective that we don't have to worry about the outflows. We're never going to be forced sellers of closed-end funds because of a potential uh, outflow. Typically in the open-end fund, uh, we have more cash on the balance sheet. We also typically have more ETFs on the balance sheet as well for that potential risk of any outflows uh, that we might have to contend with on any given day. So given that it's a closed-end fund, we don't have to worry about the uh, outflows. We can invest more opportunistically in closed-end funds when discounts are wider, um, not having to worry about the outflows. Patrick, as we sit here at the uh, end of March in 2016, can you talk a little about the uh, the por underlying portfolio and, and just sort of the way it's positioned and, and some things that you're thinking about as you look at closed-end funds? Yeah, number one, the, the environment is ideal to be invested more heavily in closed-end funds than not. Discounts are pretty attractive on a relative basis. So we have uh, approximately 90, over 90% 90 of the fund is invested in closed-end funds uh, and the balance being uh, BDCs, business development companies, that is. And then just a small percentage in cash uh, that we have some dry powder just in case discounts do go even further uh, wider. So uh, we think we're, we're pretty uh, well exposed to closed-end funds given the attractiveness and uh, where discounts are today. Um, as far as a portfolio allocation goes, uh, we are tilted more towards fixed income closed-end funds than equity closed-end funds. Uh, given the that credit spreads have widened out uh, you know, over the last five, six months, uh, in addition to credit spreads widening out, closed and fund discounts have widened out as well. So we find them more attractive today than we have in most recent years. So we have a tilt towards fixed income closed end funds. Uh, just over 50% of the fund is in fixed income closed end funds. Thanks for joining us today, Patrick. Thanks, Alan.